another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Again, verse 18, 1 John, chapter 2. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us. Now he's talking about people who profess to be Christians, but they really was against Christ. He said they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would, no doubt, have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. In other words, by them leaving Christ, that showed they wasn't ever saved in the first place. Some of you heard that saying, once saved, always saved, and you wonder, is that true? Yes. If you're really, really, really saved, if you really know God, if you really know Him, you won't leave Him. And, and if you really know Him and you stumble, you'll get up. And if you disappoint Him, you'll feel bad. You'll feel bad. You'll be godly sorry. David said to God in the book of Psalms, my sin is ever before me. You can forgive me. Yes, Lord, I know. But I can't forgive myself because I realize, like Paul said in Romans 7, that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. When you get to that point, even people that say, I'm going to repent. How are you going to repent from something if you don't acknowledge that God says one thing and then confess that you do another thing? You can't repent until you do those two steps first. Brother John wrote in verse 20, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because you ye know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? That means the anointed one, the Messiah, the rock. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but 
He that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. You can't have God the Father and call Jesus less than who he is. If you don't know Jesus is God Almighty, then there's a problem with your theology. If you don't believe that we serve a triune God, there's a problem with your theology. And there's nobody but the enemy telling you that we don't serve a triune God. Sure, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but everywhere you see the Father moving, you'll see something about the Spirit or the Holy Ghost. That's who he is. And Jesus Christ. Listen, in the Old Testament, when Jacob wrestled with that angel, he was wrestling with Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the angel of the Lord. He is God. Oh, we're going to get deep on that. Remember the other night, the Lord led me to say, that it's time to take the teaching up a notch as the Lord lead. And tonight is, is one, you might as well say this, the first excerpt right here. Check your theology. Again, those New Age ministers don't listen to them. They want to hoop, holler, jump around, dance, moonwalk, mime. Then you got unsaved people from the world coming in the place of worship, miming, moonwalking, you know, all of that. And then you got compromising carnal Christians saying, well, at least they're not in the world, they're in the building. So they brought that junk inside and you say it's okay? What else was there to believe? The ministries have Halloween parties. They put Christmas trees in the building. They do Easter egg hunts there. All these things that are demonic and not godly. One, Jesus was not born on December 25th. So you might as well accept it, smell the coffee, and leave it alone. Two, Easter eggs. The, the bunny has nothing to do. Rabbits don't even lay eggs. Some people say, well, Easter is not in the Bible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look it up. But the practice, the way people are practicing it is against Scripture. Coloring eggs, eating them, that's, that's in worship to the false god of fertility, Tammuz, who was Samarimus' son, and Samarimus was the wife of Nimrod. She claimed Tammuz was Nimrod reincarnated. And then on his, he, he supposedly was resurrected from the dead, reincarnated and resurrected. She tried to fulfill that prophecy God told Satan about there would be a, a the seed of a woman shall crush your head and you shall bruise his heel. She tried to be this woman that had a child with no man's help. And what happened was, on his birthday, they would celebrate by coloring eggs and eating them and exchanging them. And they would put up an evergreen tree. Sound familiar? And burn a Yule log. Sound familiar? And that belief, she put together this doctrine of the mother-child cult. Sound familiar? Where she called herself the queen of heaven. Sound familiar? And she always had her son, the baby, Tammuz. Sound familiar? It's time to study. Because people are being taught stuff and fed stuff that's not biblical why is it every time easter come that's when people want to do the seven last words why don't you do them today why don't you do them tomorrow why is it that it's so you know people are so caught up in tradition the holy ghost is not traditional he's spiritual get with the program or you're going to be left behind which brings us to the next point. The devil has started all this trouble. We're going to close on this and we're going to pick up on it the next time. 
We're going to close on this. But your appetite is going to be wet, so get ready. The devil been starting all this trouble. And still starting trouble now. You got people going to a place of worship where they claim God is. Where they claim the power of God is. Where they claim the healing of God is. And they sitting there with masks on looking like a bunch of ninjas. But they're doing it out of fear. In the place that you say is the house of God. And then the unsaved, secular, carnal government is trying to tell the place of worship that you can only have a certain amount of people in there. You can't sing loud. You can't have an altar call because of this corona thing. And trying to convince people to take a vaccine where all of these reports are about people having strokes and and things you better you better research don't be so gullible don't be so vulnerable don't don't do it i'm not telling you don't take the vaccine because people are gonna do what they want to do i don't wear a mask not going to and ain't nobody going to be talking all over my face either. If God say go, I go. If he don't say go, I don't go. As far as some vaccine, I'm not taking it. Ain't nobody going to stick no needle in me and shoot. Now, now, you know when they was doing a flu shot. They shot you with the flu to make you immune. So you're going to shoot somebody with COVID-19 in the needle? You're going to shoot it in them? To make them immune to it? So how many people got to be experimented on before they fix the glitches? And then you got these carnal, broken down, unsaved ministers saying, God want us to be safe. Yes, I'm getting a shot. Y'all need to follow me and get a shot. I read on the internet that the government is offering some leaders $30,000 to convince the congregation to take a shot. You better check into that. Make sure that after you get the vaccine that Brother Pastor ain't driving around in a new car or something because people for the love of money will sell you out. The devil starting all this trouble and using whoever he can using them using them to the max right now i'm just going to tell you this and then we're going to close this is where we're going to leave at revelation 19 verse 20 and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, excuse me, that wrought miracles before him that which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and then that worshipped his image. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, we're living in the days where we're, the, 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 the vaccine is the mark of the beast. It's not true. Not true at all. The chip and the this and the that is the mark of the beast. That's not true either. It's not true. We're not in those days. Right now, the devil is practicing, you could say, but we're not in those days. How do you know, Apostle? Scripture tells you that. You know what got to happen? By the time that happens, concerning the, the, the beast, who's the Antichrist, and the false prophet, before they're thrown into the lake of fire, there's things that the Antichrist got to do that he's not doing now. Why? Because he that leadeth is still in the way. <laughs> We're going to talk about that the next time. And that's the Holy Ghost. Right now, he's holding the devil back. 
He's holding him back so he can't do the stuff that's going to happen during the tribulation and around that time. The way that the earth is going to be attacked and people are going to be attacked and demons are going to be running all over the place. People are going to be trying to die and jump off mountains and bam, hit the floor and uh, the ground and not be able to die because death is going to free. Death is a spirit. It's not a thing. He is a spirit. Hell is a spiritual place that holds souls. It's like a big jail. If you could look straight in the center of the earth from an aerial view, there's a big body laying in the center of the earth with a right leg, a left leg, a right arm, left arm, the belly, the head, the center. Hell. Hell is a place. And that place holds souls. Concerning the beast, again, let's look at verse 19, Revelation 20, uh, Revelation 19, verse 19. John said, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on a horse. Now, this is allied evil powers. Can you imagine how much evilness was present right there? All of hell's demons and hell's strength forming a group to attack Christ. To make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Then it says in verse 20, <laughs> And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and then that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That's why the title of this sermon is you will live forever, but where? The alternate title is out of the frying pan into the lake of fire. <laughs> the false prophet and the antichrist was thrown into the lake of fire. Then over in chapter 20, verse 10, John said, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Oh, verse 11, John said, and I saw a great white throne. This is what's called the great white judgment throne. And him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. The small and great. These are the unsaved. This is not the saved. The saved was raptured and went on to heaven. And got their reward. And then while all of the tribulation was going on, they were they're they're gonna we're gonna be in heaven. I pray that I go. Lord, please keep me. We're gonna be in heaven at the marriage feast during the time that the tribulation is going on. The church, the body of Christ, is not gonna be here. I beg to differ. Well, beg all you want to, but the scripture says. The body of Christ is going to be gone. See, this is what needs to be taught. Because a lot of y'all leaders got people walking around not even thinking about leaving this world. And then when death catch them unaware, everybody throwing them in heaven. God said in that prior lesson, y'all making it seem like hell is empty. But it's not. Watch. 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 Verse 11, chapter 20. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. 
and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life but the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them so how sure can't be empty mm -mm. and they would judge every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death now there's something that we read three particular scriptures of earlier we read it in isaiah 45 23 romans 14 11 and philippians 2 verses 9 through 11 Envision this, and then we got to go. We're going to pick up on this for real, I promise you, as the Lord lead. Envision this. The Lord sitting on his throne. The great white judgment thrones. Two thrones he's going to sit on. One is the beam of judgment, where the saints are going to get their reward. And the rewards, the crowns. All that stand before that throne win. There are no losers there. But this throne, the great white judgment throne, is the throne of condemnation and judgment. Where the Lord, there's books that are there and the book of life. And the people that stand before him, they're all over the world. Imagine this, the Lord sitting on the throne, all over the world, all the nations, all, all over the world, everyone. How they gonna, boy, that's, how long is that going to take? How is the Lord, he's God, able to do all of, all of these people, all these souls that have been rejoined with a body? If, you're, if you died crippled, you're not going to raise crippled. If you died with one leg, you're going to be raised with two. All of this stuff, even to be thrown into the lake of fire. Catch this revelation. All these people standing before the throne, the great white judgment throne. And these books that were open have everything they did wrong and they're being judged out of that. And because their name is in that book, it's not in the book of life. And because it's not in the book of life, that's what's going to be their passageway or the, the charge that sends them to hell. But their name is not in there because their name is in here. Wow. I never saw that. My leader never told me that. That's because they don't know either. You'd be surprised how many people are not reading the scripture. Again, a lot of y'all listening to feel-good ministers that want to host events, that want to get parties, that want to get things in the park, that want to uh, uh, sell dinners, that want to have dating services, that want to uh, uh, play numbers and smoke cigarettes. And you y'all listening to leaders that want to do all of this stuff, but the message should be about heaven and hell. Because everybody is going to one of them places. And a lot of people have already went. Those that died and went to heaven, they're not up there walking around. They're not going to get their reward ahead of us. They're resting. Hebrews 4, they're resting. They're resting. They're resting because they labored here. They're resting. We're going to talk about that too. They're resting. But those that leave this world unsaved, not born again, lying, cheating, cussing, stealing, fighting, robbing, murdering, raping, all of this, all messed up on drugs, overdose and die, and everything like that. They leave this world without giving their life to Jesus Christ. They are in hell, and that's all there is to it. Now, you can get mad all you want to. Don't get mad at me. It says, you just read it. Death and hell gave up the dead which were in them. I, I didn't write that. But as a minister, a teacher of the word. You notice I stayed in the scripture all this time we've been talking. 
as a teacher of the word. A teacher don't stand here and talk, talk, talk without going to the, the source. They don't do that. That's not a teacher. That's a motivational speaker to try to encourage you. Oh, golly gee. Or, you know, something like that. But a teacher stays in the book. Those of y'all in college, don't your professor stay in the book? What are those books at the courtroom of God when he sat on the throne? The judgment was set. One was the book of conscience. Romans 2 and 15. Two was the book of words. Matthew 12 verses 36 and 37. And the scripture reads on this wise. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So for those of y'all that gossip and talk about people behind their back, your words were recorded. <laughs> your words were recorded. <laughs> the other book, the book of secret words, Romans 2 and 16 says, God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Then it says in Ecclesiastes 12 and 14, Solomon wrote, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. This scripture. Y'all should be scared by now. I am. When I read it, I get scared. I want to live right. I want to go to heaven. Don't you? Then there's the book of public works. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 15 says, Whose end shall be according to their works? Matthew 16 verse 27 says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. All rewards are not good, you know. Reward just means payment, your gift, your, your, your tally for what you've done and the work you've done and how you labored. Your reward is your payment. There's a sermon the Lord led me to do years ago, back in uh, 2007, I believe. It was called, Your Paycheck is on Its Way. No matter how you live, you will pay. If you live good, then you'll get a good reward. You live bad, you get a bad reward. Remember the Lord said, those of you that study scripture, he said to them disciples, when all of them were eating at that last meal, except Judas, but Judas was there, and he said, somebody's going to betray me, and it's best that that man had never been born. Could you imagine just being born to go to hell? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Now, here's the deep part also, and we're closing with this. <laughs> before anyone, before the devil got thrown into the lake of fire, before he get, because it hasn't happened yet. This is a prophecy of what's going to happen. This is foretelling and forthtelling what's going to happen. So before he gets thrown in the lake of fire, before the beast, that's the Antichrist, before he gets thrown into the lake of fire, before the false prophet gets thrown into the lake of fire, Oh, the false prophet is the one that's telling a lot of y'all to say stuff and prophesy. Oh, God. Before death and hell get thrown into the lake of fire. Because hell, death is a spirit. The angel of death, he's a spirit. He's not a thing. He's a spirit. And hell is a spiritual place where souls are held at until... It's time to cough them up so they go in the lake of fire. But before those demons, before the hell is trinity, that's what God was leading me to say earlier. God is the head of a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Satan has imitated God and put together his own hellish trinity. Satan assumes the role of the Father. The, fa the beast assumes the role of the Son. And the false prophet assumes the role countering the Holy Spirit. 
witches, warlocks, all of them are empowered by the false prophet. And they claim, and even psychics, and, and, and even some psychologists and psychiatrists, believe it or not, and they, they claim that their gift is from God. And they understand you. They can dissect you and analyze you and all of this and speaking words all in your life. Those are demons. But before any of them get thrown in the lake of fire, from the time judgment is passed to the time they get to the lake of fire, they're going to have help. It's not like they're just going to willingly walk there. You ever watch Judge Judy in those shows? You see how there's a bailiff there? Even on Judge Mathis, there's a bailiff. When the judge said, you got paperwork? Bailiff, would you hand me that? And the bailiff goes over there and gets the paperwork. They are the acting officer in court under the judge. Well, at the Lake of Fire, right there where Heaven's Court ha, is set up, what's going to happen is there's an angel that's going to be standing there. That's going to cast. That means throw. Those of you that fish, you know throw that's going to throw everybody into the lake of fire that angel's going to throw them in there throw them that's going to be exhausting for us it would be but for the angels they're of a different company of beings than we are we're a race they're a company of beings but there's going to be an angel to throw people in the lake of fire but before they go every foe every unsaved person everyone that has turned their back on God that didn't accept God that didn't want to hear about Jesus Christ they're gonna have to get on one knee and they're gonna have to look at him and say Jesus is Lord Oh, they're going to get on that one knee, and they're going to say it. And when they say it, it's not going to be because they're saying it joyfully. Yes, I'm serving you. No, they're going to be saying it because they found out through all of this that they were wrong. They found out that they were wrong about everything. They're admitting this out of defeat. And after that, they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Where they will burn forever and ever. As long as the people of God stay in heaven with God, which is going to be forever, in the holy city forever, the unsaved, the unrighteous, the carnal shall be in the lake of fire that long, forever. The Lord said to share this last piece of information. Here's where. We need to check ourselves and see is this is this right here any of us okay look at this and see if it's you in the book of revelation still that's where we are in the book of revelation chapter thank you Chapter hmm. Chapter twenty one Verse I'll start at verse one and just read these couple of verses, then we out. Chapter twenty one, verse one. John wrote, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now the unsaved are already in the lake of fire. The devil, the false prophet, the antichrist, death, hell. Again, all unsaved people and all of Satan's demons, all of hell. All of them in the lake of fire by this time. Verse 4. 
and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Remember, death was thrown in the lake of fire. So there's not going to be no more death. Nobody's going to die no more. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things. The former things. All this stuff. The order. The, the protocol. The process. Everything. The former things are passed away. But he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, he said this to John, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha. This is Jesus talking. Alpha is the Greek A in the Greek alphabet. It means the beginning. And Omega, which is their Greek Z, you might as well say. I'm comparing it to our alphabet. Alpha will be A, Omega will be Z. And then, of course, there's things in between. But he said he's the beginning and the end. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He didn't say daughter, because in heaven there's all spiritual sons. We'll talk about that too. What? I, I know your, your leader, the one you say is your leader that you following and lifting up higher than Jesus. I know they ain't tell you that because a lot of them don't know that. They, a lot of them don't know that because they don't read. Then, then John wrote, but the fearful, because this is what God told him. The Lord Jesus Christ was telling him to write this. But the fearful, that means people scared of Christ. To live for him, to follow him. Oh, I don't want to do I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable because I talk about the Lord all the time. All right, so you're a chicken. The fearful and unbelieving. I don't accept that. I'm a black Hebrew. I'm not a Christian. I'm not this. And I don't believe Jesus died on the cross. I'm a Muslim. I'm this, I'm that. The unbelieving. Those that don't believe. In Jesus Christ being God and that don't believe in what the Bible says oh the Bible has been tampered with and changed well you keep on believing that because this right here calls you an unbeliever so the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable homosexuality is not the only abomination there's a lot of abominations but no matter which one if you live an abominable lifestyle this is talking about you and murderers and whoremongers now some people say that means a woman that no it don't a woman prostitute is called a harlot a man prostitute is called a whoremonger check it out look it up and sorcerers now we're talking people that run apothecaries <laughs> look that up i'm not even gonna tell you what that is people that you look it up because a lot of medicines and stuff, those are, <laughs> look it up. That's sorcery, believe it or not. We need medication. Luke was a physician, so some medication is good. But there's a lot of it that are, that that's, that's not good. Sorcery, witchcraft, spells, even root doctors and all of that. I'm telling you. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, people that lift everybody up, you idolizing your leader. The one you call your pastor and your my apostle, my this, please. Well, they're walking around wearing a mask just like you are. <laughs> idiot. I'm talking about them, not you, but them. They're, they're idiots. Because they're trying to get everybody to think that they're way up here when, again, they're walking around. And those that don't, that that have said, I ain't going to wear a mask because I'm powerful. I do miracles and all that. And then next thing you know, they get sick and die. Oh, oh, pastor. Oh, well. Don't be messing with demons. You don't mess with demons if you don't know nothing about them. It says in idolaters and all liars, not some, all. All of them. I just called you on the phone. 
Oh, I didn't hear it. No way you heard it. I, 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 was you, where, where you going? Nowhere, I'm staying in the house. No way you not. No way you not. In the place of worship, jumping around, shouting and all of that. Then after that, you go play the numbers and all of that. You try to profess like you live a holy lifestyle, but you don't. Liar. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now I'm going to throw a nugget at you and we can pray and be out. Nowhere in there is it going to say whomsoever will let him come. And a lot of people try to take that from the last chapter of Revelation, but that's not what it says. That's not what it says. Look it up. Or don't say that. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for all of this. Forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and false and wrongs. Let us get good, adequate rest today. Be with your people. Let this word, Lord, let this word stay in their spirit, that they should meditate on it, and that they should, all of us, not just them, all of us, should chew on it and, and, and look at ourselves. Line ourselves up with your word so that your word can show us where we're wrong at and we could get it right. We could get a relationship with you. So that on that last day, while the tribulation is going on here, that we could be in heaven with you, getting our reward. Bless the sick, heal them, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless. Those that partner with the ministry and support the work the ministry is doing for your people, out in the street and everywhere else, bless them and replenish what they share. Those that saw the Cash App link during this broadcast, and you said to them, share. And you told them what? Bless them for obeying you. But those that didn't, that's between you and them. Just bless the ministry to continue working for you at doing great things for you. Most of all, keep thine servant with a studying spirit so that you can use me to continue teaching the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God and bless our families, our children, and those that we're praying for, those whose names are in the prayer box, let them see you. Show them them. Show us us. But those of us that you want to bless, bless us to hear and see and to have the desire to accept so that we can enjoy the blessing that come from you. Because when you bless us and we accept it, people connected to us, our children, our, our everything else, and everybody connected to us stand to be blessed because you have blessed us. We love you. We love you. And we rebuke the devil and we plead the blood against him. And again, bless every prayer box that you set up all over this nation and other nations that you set up. Look in your mailboxes, the prayer boxes, and answer prayer. Move in a mighty way. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for hearing us and for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, this is why the man of God needs a wife, because I need prayer. You know how much that took to be used by God and share all that, I'm drained. Praise God. When those demons and everybody get thrown into the lake of fire, I can see the angel telling them, say it. Say it! Say it!
Get on your knees. Say it. And then they say, Jesus is Lord. And then they're thrown into the lake of fire. God bless you. And have a good night. And a good morning. And a good day. And don't let nothing stress you. This ministry loves you. In Jesus' name, amen. That was a very, very powerful show. It was very powerful, and I hope you enjoyed it. The thing is that there's not a lot of ministers that are coming out of the book, but instead what they're doing is telling you what they think, telling you what their theory is, telling you what other people told them, and, and getting it all wrong. The most important place to get your biblical information is from the Bible, the Word of God, okay? Now, I really thank you for, for tuning in, and join us next time where you will get more Word, and the Holy Ghost will be able to talk to you and encourage you. We love you. Thank you so much. This is the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. And this is a raw and uncut production. And I'm Apostle Coleman. God bless you. Oh, we're in television, right? So we'll do it like this. This is another Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry, TV, Raw, and Uncut Productions. Sad.